Welcome. I'm Chris Frew, CEO of BioWiz Networks. I'm thrilled to be here at Philly Builds Bio third annual Life Science Symposium. We're here where hundreds of attendees and over 50 panelists have come together to talk about innovation in the life science industry and specifically what's happening in greater Philadelphia. I'm honored to be here with Michael Riotto. Michael, thanks for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Would you uh, mind uh, giving a quick introduction to yourself? A uh, quick introduction. I live right outside of Philadelphia in Warwick Township. I'm uh, married to a wonderful wife of 36 years, two grown children, and I live with multiple myeloma and incurable blood cancer for the last 13 years. And and tell me about the organization you're a part of. I'm part of the Health True organization. I'm, I'm one of their coaches, and I'm, I'm kind of intricately involved with everything that they do, um, like being here today. Michael, can you share a little bit about your journey um, as a patient advocate and kind of how that brought you to becoming a myeloma coach? Wow. Um, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, it, it all started way back when I was diagnosed in, in 2011. In roughly about 2013, I got involved with an organization to do peer to peer education and educate other um, patients about myeloma and stem cell transplant. And that led into to me being a coach for the health tree organization. And right now I have what we call coaches. I have 13 coaches, mm-hmm. as many as 23 at one time. And I kind of helped them. You know, I wish there was a, a coach program when I was first diagnosed because, you know, the doctors and the nurses are wonderful. They're terrific. But having that one-on-one conversation with someone's been through what you're going to go through makes all the difference in the world. And then when you talk about um, advocacy a little bit, there's both, there's two different kinds in my world. It's self-advocacy and it's, you know, speaking up for yourself. And if your doctor's not great, you fire your doctor and you find somebody new that's going to take care of you. And there's also what I, what I work on extensively now is legislative advocacy and advocating for better access and affordability and research dollars for, for all patients. Yeah. Well, I'm sure as a coach, um, I, I know it's, you know, going through any type of health, uh, scare and condition is, is challenging. Having someone else there that can help you along the journey is critical. It, it, it's immensely beneficial. Uh, it, 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 you know, a little, little thing like taking a medicine, you know, there's one particular med that I was taking and I was taking every morning and I finally started to talk to somebody when I met at a conference and they're like, why are you taking it in the morning? And I said, oh, guess what I was told. And you know, it made you groggy and sleepy all the time. And they're like, take it at night, ask your doctor, take it at night. And so I switched to take it at night. It's some, it, but the doc never tells you those yeah. things, but then you learn out, Hey, I slept much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so uh, you talk about advocacy as well, and we're here today at Philly Builds Bio, which is a gathering of industry leaders and academic leaders. Um, why is it important to be engaging for for you and, and your organization to be engaging with this community as well? I, probably a couple different reasons, but but I think it's important for, for all the organizations in, in the biotech industry to realize that what they do may help me. You know, I'm going to tell my story a little bit about my history, a little bit about my, my, my illness, and just, just to remind them that, that I'm the end result. You know, what they develop in the lab or what they develop in an auto computer might help me in the end. The other thing is, too, is we need to work on access and affordability. You know, it's great and it's wonderful. I'm lucky. I live right outside of Philadelphia. There's all these great institutions right here, you know, UP, Jefferson, Fox Chase. But 80% of the folks in rural areas or they're an underserved area, they don't have access. You know, we look at the latest, you know, cellular technology like CAR T, which is great. There's only 76 centers in the United States that can actually administer that treatment for Lola. That's kind of scary. So if you're in Idaho, guess what? You got to travel hours, four hours, six hours before you can get that treatment. So working on access and affordability is, is, is big mission. So. Yeah. That's a big, uh, top of point all across the industry. Um, and continues to be, and I think uh, it's important to have uh, be part of that discussion. How um, um, can you talk about some of like the success stories of you know Health Tree and working with Health Tree and how that is improving outcomes? In- Health Tree is a really unique organization because they have community, you know, they have education, they have an incredible you know web bank of of all kinds of videos. They have um, an incredible coach program, which I'm you know really super glad to be part of. There's over 200. 200 coaches right now. And they also have what they call Cure Hub. And, and it, it's a huge, gigantic database where, where it gathers patient information. And, and literally, it, it, it enables a doctor to be able to say, hey, I'm looking for this particular drug, this particular age, this particular sex. Um, can, can you help me you know, pull it out? 
and and they can they can they can mine that data relatively fast because it's already in their bank, and and they can get an answer and and it may predict a treatment, and that's the coolest thing. So say for example, you're diagnosed with the, with this stage and and, and you're this old and you have this comorbidity, they can go back and look at all the folks that are in the database, and the doctor can actually say, hey, I think this treatment might work for you best. That's pretty pretty. Uh, how, how should we put that? Um, I don't know, remarkable. It is remarkable. And uh, I can imagine how many lives have been changed because people have accessed that information ahead of time. Yes. What, uh, you, you know, as a coach, I know the advocacy around your work with patients is, is I can imagine it's very important to you. So, so what, when you, if you're talking to someone new, I'm sure you, you, there's a lot, you can, a lot of advice you can give them, but what advice would you give someone Who's uh, starting to go through their 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 journey and, and to advocate for themselves? I think the most important thing that we talk about, but when we do, is one word: hope. You know, when I was first diagnosed, they gave me roughly three months to live. I made it through the three months, and they said, "You know what? We might make it to three years." I'm at 13 years now. I'm beating the odds. Most of my lung patients don't make it that long. So, so I think the first word that we always talk about is hope, having a positive attitude and, and really work on self-advocacy. Many people are so afraid, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, of firing their doctor. If your doctor is not going to answer your questions or give you the time that you need, you need to find somebody who will because they're out there. You know, my doc at UP, man, I love the guy. I, and and I, I always warn him every time I go see him now, I say, if you ever think about moving, retiring, I need to know years in advance because I, I want to be able to make sure I can follow you and take and you know make sure I'm taking care of myself. But um, I think that's that's the most important piece of advice. Number one is to have hope and a positive outlook. And, and number two, um, speak up for what you want because it can make a difference. Yeah. And uh, as we wrap up here, uh, I'd love for you to, Kind of share also if you're speaking to a, a biotech company or a, an entrepreneur who's is working on a new new disease or new what message do you have for them always put the patient first always re- always remember that everything that you work on is for the patient and i think that's that's the bottom line well that's great it's a great message michael thank you for joining me today thank you for everything that you do thank you my pleasure My name is Chris Farouk, the CEO of BioBuzz Networks. We're here live today at Philly Builds Bio.